All right, what is the future for Dragon Ball Super? I mean, I know for the show, they still got to do um, Moro's arc and um, Granola's arc. So we still got a while for the TV shows. But for the manga, now that we've seen Gohan and uh, Gohan, Beast Gohan, Ultra Instinct, Goku fight each other, we see Black Frieza. What happens after that? I know uh, Karthu Dojo, he's good at... Uh, you know, talking about subjects like this, breaking things down when it comes to Dragon Ball and all that. So I'm interested in seeing his take on it. Me, here's what I think. After the whole reveal of Black uh, Frieza, I think Frieza is going to be terrifying. And what I mean by that is, I think I was watching the Tournament of Power yesterday, and I was thinking of an um, Topo. Wait, that's how you say his name, right? Jiren and Topo. Topo, the one who <laughs> beat Frieza down. Top. Wait, hold on. Yeah, Topo. Sorry, I'm terrible at remembering names. But, um, yeah, after that beatdown that F he gave Frieza when uh, he turned to the God of the, like, to the um, destruction, um, I'm pretty sure Frieza's going to remember that and go visit him. And I'm pretty sure he's going to... This is just me speculating. I think Frieza's going to go on a, a destroying spree. He's going to destroy Topo. He's almost going to destroy Jiren. I think something's going to happen where he gets saved. I think he's going to try to go and destroy, like, Beerus in him. I don't think Beerus is going to die or nothing like that. But I, I really believe Freeze is going to go on some crazy tear. And he's going to have some backup. I don't know who that would be. But I think the next arc, this is just me, is going to be something of Freeza going through a whole tear. Because if you think about it, he could have killed Vegeta and Goku right there when he showed them their their power and he knocked them both out in one strike. But he wanted to instill fear and let them know, like, yeah, it's not even close no more. Your ultra instinct means nothing. I'm far superior than that. And I think he's going to go around the universes and multiverses, and, I mean, different um, universes, and let other people know. Let Jiren know. Because if you remember, I was watching Turn of the Power and he had moments where he was talking to himself and he was like, one day... One day, one day. I think in the next arc, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be the day then, and it could be Topo dying because of that moment that you know when Topo was holding Frieza's head like that. That was probably Frieza's worst beating in Super. Yeah, in all of Dragon Ball Super, that thirty seconds with Topo that was rough. I was like, dang, goodness great, that was rough. And I think Frieza is gonna take that very personally, you know. He's not going to be as rough against Jiren. He's still going to try to, I believe he's still going to try to destroy him. But in his head, he probably think we beat you already in the tournament of power him and Goku. So, yeah, I think he's going to try to go at the um, Beerus and other ones like him. Yeah, that's the best way I could put it. I think that's how it's going to start. It's going to start with Frieza showing fear to the every universe. But let me know in the comments what you think. What do you think is going to happen in the next arc? Let's see what he thinks here. As we wait for I'll put the original video in the description below. As we wait for a new Dragon Ball anime, and while the Dragon Ball Super manga is recapping the events of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, a lot of people are wondering what the future for the series will be. Well, some future arcs have already been hinted at. The most obvious one is a Black Frieza arc. I doubt another invasion of Earth would happen, but with Broly needing to be hidden from Frieza, it does seem possible that he's hunting potential foes. A lot of fans have speculated so on this already, but fear I in believe a, different a universe. Butcher arc for Black Frieza could be pretty interesting. Because so if you think about it, if you think about it, Black Frieza is literally stronger than anybody right now. It's questionable with the, you know, the uh, Destructors. It's, it's questionable on them. But everybody else? Yeah. And it's not even close. Unless Jiren in this time span has gotten a lot stronger. When him and Topo said we're going to train. Unless Jiren and Topo just exceeded in a crazy way, Frieza is light years away from everybody from all these different universes so it's going to be interesting to see i really believe he's going to go on a crazy tear different enough from what goku black and zamas did his goals in the tournament of power had to do with overthrowing gods so perhaps he's tired of simply being the self-described emperor of the universe and now wants to solidify himself as the see? god of the multiverse we think alike we battles, think alike karthu broly versus frieza is actually being set up pretty heavily with the idea being really? that frieza would win if broly can't control himself I could even see the fight going in Broly's favor after his training with Goku, until Frieza taunts Broly about his dead father. Maybe
maybe even revealing that he was the one who killed Paragus, causing Broly to lose control and ultimately lose the fight. We'd also, of course, have another Goku versus Frieza rematch. Of course. And while I think these are always Person fun, I Wait. doubt another Goku W is what yeah, the story Yeah, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I would love... Let Vegeta have this one. Let him have this one. No interference, nothing. Let him... And then let him win. Vegeta needs this one. Dating all the way back to Dragon Ball Z. From him as a kid... What he did to Planet Vegeta, that beatdown Frieza gave him in uh, the Frieza saga, whew, that's still one of the worst. Uh, I know I was talking about Toppo holding Frieza, but that's nothing to Frieza torturing um, Vegeta there. That was rough. Um, him getting his glory taken away in Super, because Vegeta should have got that, but of course Frieza had to destroy the Earth. Um, yeah, let, let Vegeta have this one. Let him have it. I, like, I, I even love in the manga when... Uh, Goku and uh, Vegeta went back to Whis and them, and Goku and them are talking. You see Vegeta in the corner just looking at the sky. You see Black Freeze just look that, that that image they just showed. I like how they showed that in the manga because it's like Freeze is still haunting Vegeta, and Vegeta needs that release. And the best release in Dragon Ball is to fight him and to win. So give it to Vegeta. That's all I'm saying. He's leading to. So maybe like the beginning of the Granola arc or even the fight with androids 19 and 20 and Z, Goku will be taken out early to give Vegeta and the others a chance to shine. I actually think Vegeta is a contender to get the W against Frieza, but is the way to show someone has moved on from their past to have them focus on revenge? The Granola arc seems to want us to think differently. So it's No, possible. no, no. No, no, no. Uh, because after that, that's what I'm saying. That moment, um... What, what what's the time stamp? 136. All right, I'll come back to this. Because this here, this one, is this one right here, that's this was after that moment he was just talking about. So Vegeta's still thinking about Frieza, you know, and maybe he did let it go, but then when Frieza came back as Black Frieza and just annihilated Goku, uh, embarrassed Goku and Vegeta with just one strike, that's come back. And this is the part. This here, I was so happy they showed this in the manga because it's like, we still need that book closed. Vegeta versus Frieza. And let it be the end. Let Vegeta win. Let it be a crazy battle. You know what? Kind of like how Goku and Frieza was in the Frieza saga. That long into... Let them have that. Let Vegeta win. And as much as I love Frieza, he's one of my favorite villains of all time in any superhero art or whatever. Let, let, Vegeta, let Frieza never come back. Let that be the end of Frieza. You know, have somebody else come back if you want, like Turles, have sales, somebody else. But let that be the end of Frieza never comes back. And that's from Vegeta's hand. Bro, that would be epic, bro. Want us to think differently. So it's possible Resurrection F really was Vegeta's only chance for a win against Frieza. No, no, no. I I'm think he'll get another for one. Vegeta to win, though. I'm just not sure if it's realistic in the current story direction. Come on, writers. Let it happen. Give Vegeta that. Saiyans and decides to invade Earth after, he won't have an easy time since Orange Piccolo and Beast Gohan are ready for him. While Orange Piccolo is likely well below Black Frieza's power, Beast Gohan has yet to be compared directly against people like Ultra Ego Vegeta and Ultra Instinct Goku, aside from the vague statements, of course. This fight could even be thematic for Gohan if he's the one to win. Resurrection F specifically got him to start training again to protect his family. But with the beast form now, he might actually have the power to handle this himself, especially if he seriously trains in his free time. This Gohan has Cell. Let Vegeta have this. Gohan that kept the promise to protect his loved ones looks like, and he might even be the one to beat Black Freeza <laughs> that is because a cool of picture it. Right there. Which leaves me with one more interesting fight that could happen before the climax of this arc. Beerus versus Black Frieza. Beerus Yo, that will be sick. That will be sick. And we see what Beerus is really about. Because I thought at first when Goku uh, went Ultra Instinct and he saw Beerus ascend as well, I thought they were stronger than uh, Beerus and every other destroyer. But I was told I was wrong. And I was it was broken down to me, which I appreciate. But now that Frieza has eclipsed of a Ultra Instinct by a long mile, it makes you wonder, is he stronger than Beerus now? Is this level that Frieza's at, is Beerus right there? That would be a that would be a heck of a I want to see that. We still have not seen Beerus going all out. And I want to see that. And Beerus to see if it's close. The whole series. While the manga does show Beerus fighting at full power, we have no reason to believe he's lying to the Grand Priest of all people. That fight has all the gods of destruction as yeah, fairly relevant to one another, with Catella and Beerus being slightly above the rest. 
Belmod doesn't even require healing after the fight though. He's even able to trap every god of destruction in barriers, then uses key cards to slice them up and Beerus can and do anything about it, so he's clearly not that far behind. Jiren is directly stated to be stronger than Belmod in the manga, no rumors needing to be confirmed like the anime, and Goku is far stronger than he was when he fought Jiren. So you'd think it'd be confirmed that Beerus is behind Goku and Vegeta, but that not being confirmed blatantly in the narrative is a big sign that it still may not have happened yet. A Black Frieza fight could finally resolve the growing tension be between sick, the god bro. and the emperor, That'd be as well sick. as definitively put Beerus You know what? I'm thinking about it now. Make this arc a movie. Two and a half hours. That's something that Dragon Ball I don't think has ever done. Make a two and a half hour animated movie. And it's about Frieza going on a tear. And make it the most intense movie ever. Let Frieza win most of his fights. To where this is like Frieza's final goodbye. Basically for us as the wa who are watching. Because when he loses, it's that's it. And let Vegeta... And I know I'm talking as a fan of Vegeta. Like Vegeta is my favorite, but still, forget as me being a fan. Just the story of Frieza, the the that duo together. This is what Vegeta needs. It'll be a perfect ending. But for Frieza going to tear, go at Beerus, all these other ones in different universes, that should be a whole movie. Forget an arc. I mean, forget a a show. I mean, you could do it as a show too. But um, you know, like they did the uh. Like when Frieza's Resurrection, that was a movie, and then um, when Beerus came, I forgot what that movie was called. But when he came and they turned it into a movie, then it was a TV show. You can make it to a TV show if you want, but I think you should have it come out first as a movie. Have the best animators. Have oh my goodness, that just think just thinking about that now gives me chills. That would be intense. And you see Frieza and Beerus head to head. We standing there. Because we we still know that Weiss and that like that's there's no competition. Weiss and them are gonna win that. But so but Weiss is gonna stay out of it. Weiss is gonna be like, and to see them go all out, whoo, that would be sick. And go you beats Gohan and you know Freeze is gonna have some other backup with him. Who I don't know. Thinking about it in Dragon Ball Super, maybe Cooler comes back. Maybe he come maybe he becomes an actual canon character like how they brought Broly in. Maybe they bring Cooler in. Because technically he's not canon, so he could be a canon character, bro. Just talking about it got me excited, bro. Like, that would be sick. Dang. If you ask me, though, there's another arc that should happen before Beerus fights anyone seriously. You see, modern Dragon Ball started with Battle of Gods and Beerus's hunt for his greatest rival, the Super Saiyan God. Later in the Dragon Ball Super manga, just before the Tournament of Power, the prophecy of Beerus's greatest rival is expanded to include both Goku and Vegeta. But it's something that Beerus just can't believe. He even beats up Vegeta just to prove how absurd it is for them to be his rivals. The plot keeping the prophecy of Beerus' greatest rival alive is seemingly pointing towards a rematch at some point. Perhaps a second battle of gods with both Goku and Vegeta taking turns to prove themselves against Beerus after all the training and growth they've done. I think this arc needs to happen before Beerus participates in any fights, because seeing him lose to someone Goku or Vegeta end up beating would remove all the tension from that story. Sad to say, if Dragon Ball Super was planning to end overall with the Tournament of Power, using the last few episodes and chapters to cover a Goku Beerus rematch would have perfectly bookended the story. Unfortunately, we missed that one chance, and ending the series with the rematch would just feel a bit empty at this point. So I think a mini arc is gonna have to do. Speaking of mini arcs, a quick trip to Universe 6 could be a lot of fun, especially if it splits up Goku and Vegeta. We all know Vegeta promised to visit the Universe 6. I would like to see point, that. Even yeah. planning on meeting their king, who is apparently similar to himself. That's, that's one thing, seeing how Vegeta is now, I would love to see his attitude towards other Saiyans, something that was taken away from him. Cause regardless of how he acted towards uh, Kaba, he loved Kaba. And he loved the fact there's other saying, you know, sayings out there that's like Planet Vegeta. I would love to see something like that where Kaba introduces to the other saying. Vegeta's gonna be stronger than all of them. You could already tell that. But that would be that would be cool. That would be just a cool the way episode. I see the 
The way I see this arc going is giving Goku and Vegeta different activities with their Saiyan disciples. Vegeta would go with Kaba into Saiyan society, perhaps learning about their history and differences to the Saiyans he knew in his youth, culminating in him meeting the king of the Saiyans, and possibly learning how they changed from the path of the Universe 7 Saiyans. Meanwhile, Goku could be caught up with other activities like training Khalifla and Kale, sparring the two as he helps refine their abilities. This could culminate with Khalifla getting Super Saiyan 3, while Kale and he'll probably bring powers, Broly with him too, way, which would be a cool thing Broly. too. You have Kale and uh, uh, Califla versus uh, Goku and Broly. That would be cool. A good end to their training would be Goku teaching the two the fusion dance, allowing them to fuse in dire situations without the need of Patara earrings. And if we're really lucky, Goku might test this new fusion out not only against himself, but maybe against others, like Broly if he gets to come along on this trip, or See? against Hit and his time manipulation, which would be a fun action set piece to tie up the arc with. If you're wondering about Goku's desire to train others, it's been a running theme since the Cell Saga. But of course, his most anticipated disciple is U, the reincarnation of Kid Buu as a pure-hearted person. The end of Z I was glad is they the mentioned that in ending Super. to the original manga, and it's been stated that it won't be retconned by Dragon Ball Super. Toyotaro even said, we are preparing the ground to direct Dragon Ball Super into the original Dragon Ball Z ending. After Superhero's release, even Toriyama was calling it the story right before the final chapter of the original manga, so it's seemingly up next in the timeline. Even though it already exists, I do think a retelling to cover some of the minor discrepancies would be huge. Fix up little things, like the amount of time it's been since Bulma has seen Goku. Yeah. She says in the original manga ending, it's been five years since she's last seen Goku because of his training trips, which Super actually explains well, with training being mostly done on Beerus' planet. Since Dragon Ball Super Superhero is just before the end of Z, about a year before, this actually means that Goku wouldn't have seen Bulma in around four years by the time end of Z takes place. Not nearly as big of a discrepancy as people seem to think. There's also other characters to worry about now, so instead of focusing on the 28th Tenkaichi Budokai like the original version did, we can see other characters and what they're doing at the time of the tournament. Like, where are Broly, Beerus, and Whis during this? I think the use of B-plots for a retelling of the end of Z could keep things fresh while establishing some important points. But nothing should be more important than Oob. We now have context for just how strong Goku is, and with his involvement in the Moro arc, we have reason to believe that Oob is also stronger than we he could have ever anticipated. He's not just Kid Buu again, he's like the fully realized potential of Kid Buu. Perhaps tying back to the fact that those with pure hearts tend to be the strongest in the series. Goku, Gohan, and even Zeno all have a purity to them, so why wouldn't this apply to Kid Buu's reincarnation as well? Of course, this means we can have some section of the story dedicated to showing Oob's training, perhaps even having him introduced to other disciples of Goku, like Khalifla, yeah. Kale, and even- I would Bro like that but better. Most importantly- Cause that's the one thing about Dragon Ball Z I did like was how he just left his family you know left his wife and all that not really a big explanation it just disappeared and then the next time you saw it was in GT and U was grown like basically an adult so you could tell how long he was away from his family I didn't like that it's like you can still train him but do it with everybody else still you know oh here's another little thing Super should add a kissing scene with Goku and, Ki and Chi Chi. After that nonsense in the the black art where he doesn't know what a kiss was, they they need to give that to Chi Chi. Give her that moment. Let him let it be one episode. He takes her out to dinner or something, and then he gives her. He says Chi Chi, and she he like like you know gets closer to her and just give her a kiss. Bro, Chi Chi deserves that. After that nonsense we heard, what's that, Trucks? What is that? And Fujita's like, you don't know what a kiss is? Like that, because they wrote that in this arc, they have to give us now. It's only right. They got to give us a moment like that. You know, Chi Chi's a big deal at Dragon Ball. She's been around since Dragon Ball, since the beginning. So, you know, I, that woman sacrificed a lot for that man. So give us that. But no, when it comes to training Oob, I hope it's not him just disappearing. Let him still be with his family. He's a father, grandfather. He's brought these other people around like they just show Broly all these other ones you know let them still be around but say you know what I'm gonna train you let's look at the group it's kind of like um what movie was that Age of Ultron I don't know if I remember that in uh, Avengers Age of Ultron when uh at the end after Wanda and Falcon joined the Avengers you see 
uh, Captain America, Scarlet Witch walking, and he they walk into this room. You see all the newcomers, Vision them come in, and then he says Avengers, and it goes to the credits. Goku should have it like that with Oob. He should have Oob say, "Look at this." All the other fighters show up. Pan, we see her like teenage Pan. We see gold tin and uh, trunks. All these other ones, and <clears throat> and then he's like, "Now let's train." You know, I hate that. I, that's the one thing about Goku that annoys me that he loves just going away from people. It's like, nah, bro. Come on now. I like, yeah, I, I agree with him. Don't have no, I didn't see Boma in five years and then have like no care at all about it. You know, stuff like that. Like, let's have Goku care a little bit more. He brought all these people in, in his life, and then he barely sees them, especially Chi Chi. But uh, yeah, I would like that. We do finally cover the end of Z. The story can move outside of the 10 year time skip it's been stuck in and go into uncharted territory without the baggage of the past weighing it down. Speaking of the past, why not have future trunks come back looking <laughs> for help again? Yeah. I'm kidding. That would genuinely be a terrible I decision, especially. I'm not mad at that. Oh, wait. With how badly they butchered his original ending in Z with. True, his true. That is true. I ain't, yeah. No, let him be at peace with my, yeah, that's a good point. New ending in Super. I really think Oob should be the last thing that rhymes with Dragon Ball Z. We have the revivals of Frieza to tie back to the events of Namek, the creation of Cell Max to call back to the Cell Saga, and Oob's existence interrupting a tournament just like Boo did. If we're going to rehash anything after this, it should be modern material with a spin. So why not another tournament of power? I've spoken about Ooh. a second tournament of power in detail in two other videos. <laughs> oh, that would be sick. focused on the competitive and how they've changed or grown since the last tournament. Here I want to talk about the narrative. I think it could be quite different from the original while still using it as a foundation. The first big change could be in the format. We're not in Fortnite dominated times anymore, so a battle royale isn't really necessary. This could help to limit the team sizes and not rely on constant fighting. We don't need to see every fight between members of the fodder universes, so that could allow a more interesting story to be fleshed out off of the arena floor. That's a long shot though. So yeah. assuming it is another battle royale, I do think it would likely be interrupted in some way or at least have the stakes changed a bit. Not only because Team Universe 7 seems like they'll be unstoppable now, <laughs> but also yeah. because it'd be boring to do the same thing again. I spoke about this a bit in a recent video, specifically the idea that universes 13 through 18 could have been revived by Android 17's wish and they might rebel against Zeno, which could be an interesting way to have us question the structure of the multiverse. There's also the possibility that universes 13 through 18 fight the six lowest ranked universes to determine who gets to keep existing. Basically, after realizing these six universes were mistakenly revived, the Zenos go to erase them again. But before they can, the gods of those universes plead to the Zenos to spare them. This leads to the Grand Priest revealing how they were accidentally restored by a wish made after Universe 7 won a tournament, so they ask for the same courtesy to fight for their own existence against the other lowest ranked universes. As you can see, there are a lot of ways this could play out differently. One idea I also really like goes back to the first idea in this video, Black Frieza. If he really wants that to is what I really want. Finding a way to sabotage another tournament of power so that he wins the Super Black Dragon Frieza, Balls, I want him to terrorize to everybody. The Zenos when they're off guard could make for an interesting way to vary up this retread of an old concept. Needless to say, Dragon Ball Super has a lot of ways to keep going. So make sure to subscribe if you but haven't yet. This, but Frieza is still way stronger than Gohan. As powerful as Gohan is, I don't think he's at the level Frieza is. I don't, you know, he can still have time to train, and Gohan is that top tier now. But when you look at how easy it was for Frieza to knock out Goku and Vegeta, and granted they were damaged, but still, how easy it was. Frieza was literally smiling and hit them, uh, give them one little small hit, and they was out cold. I, I, the level distance between Gohan and Frieza as cool as that battle will look unless Gohan did some training I think Black Frieza still eclipsed him uh, but yeah so it's exciting who knows these now I would say the next 10 years from like 10 years excuse me the next 10 years is going to be interesting for Dragon Ball to see where they go to see where they go with this so let me know the cop I gotta look at this uh, next tournament of power that should be interesting but let me know what you think in the comments below and yeah I'll see you later Shout out to him. I'll put the original video in the description.